Willie D Live. It's Willie D, y'all. Back with another episode of information and instructions to help you navigate through this wild, crazy, beautiful world. In the studio, D L Hughley. What's up, man? How you doing, What's baby? Up? What's up, King? How you doing? I'm good, man. How, now, how how are you doing? I'm serious about this. I'm, I'm really serious. I'm really about good, how, how man. You doing? Really yeah. good. You know, um, I'm a grandfather now, so <laughs> yeah. but I'm really I'm really good. I feel really good. Sharp. Feel. Feel strong. I'm, now, I'm, now, I'm what, hanging in there. Now, now what do you have? A, a, a daughter, right? I have two. You have two, gr- yeah, two I have two girls. granddaughters. I have two, two daughters and a, and, a, and a son, but I, I have two granddaughters. One is uh, two and a half, and one is three weeks old. Yeah. And what do they call you? The pop. Him. They call you. They call you him. No, nah, they don't say him. Yes, they do. Really? Well, <laughs> well the, the three month, uh, three week old don't call me nothing yet. Yeah. But uh, my oldest, uh, my um, Nola, is her name, calls me him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, are you still mad at people for not taking that, that jab? <laughs> no, no. You know, here's the thing. I'm not. Uh, people, uh, people have kind of their own process. But for me, once uh, you know, I I got the uh, virus and passed out and was, went through all the uh, long term COVID. It was something. I mean, and watching people in the hospital that I was in die, I was like. It's something I was gonna do, mm-hmm. but I, th- I, I, I think I rejected mostly the fact that people who were not experts were out experting the expert. Like, I, if you listen, uh, doctors like anybody else ha- have a propens- propensity to be wrong, but they damn sure are probably have a better shot of being right than some dude on the internet <laughs> who well, just. Well, well, in this case, they were wrong. Uh, I, I disagree. You what do you mean? Well, they wrong act- about what? But they actually said that 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 that. that the uh, the jab did not was not as effective as they claimed it was, and they said that there well, was many reports that just, they said that they actually knew that. Um, and see, when we start talking about they and them, I'd have to see what you were talking and about. Him. And him, I'm him. him. <laughs> but it, there was there was this hodgepodge of people getting online and putting stuff up. But I can tell you this: I talked to my doctor that I've had for thirty years. I trust him. I trust him with my family. And I took the jab. Now, I'm not going to... Um, I was angry at people who had no medical expertise pretending like it wasn't real. And people were dying. There are a million people who are not here anymore. as evidenced mm-hmm. by the fact that there's so many black orphans right now. And I, and I know a lot of people uh, who died of, of just not believing something. But just what, not, what do you say to those people who said I don't so many say, people died that... That they I died if they they would not have died if not for taking the jab. I think that people, uh, you know, I think that it, it was sad that something became so political. I think because of the leadership apparatus uh, in this country, and it became a political statement. And it's really weird. The same. There have been two human viruses that have been eradicated. Two viruses. That one was smallpox, and that took hundreds of years uh, to get rid of. And the and other was. Uh, what was it? One was small packs and one was polio. polio. Yeah. But polio is not even eradicated now. It's, it was in Afghanistan and Pakistan. And now it's resurging again it's because uh, enough people has, haven't been vaccinated. I'm, I'm not a medical doctor, but I am going to trust people who I've trusted with my, my entire life. I know that um, my, my granddaughter took the very same polio vaccine to a le- greater or lesser degree than I did, mm-hmm. that I did. And she did the same vaccine that we had starting in the late 50s they have now. So um, it's interesting that people have had to take these vaccines their whole life. And all of a sudden it became a political, uh, a political uh, cudgel. And I just thought it was, I, you know, I, I have a, a voice like everybody else has a voice. I used it from my experience and I don't feel bad about anything I said or any conflict I had. You don't even feel bad for calling people motherfuckers? No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you were mad, but I was, I understood why you were mad. I Dude, mean, you you almost died. I almost died. You know, and I I could understand right. the rage. I mean, like, I, and here's the thing: like, I get messages uh, every time you do some shit. Right. Look at your boy. Right. This is your boy right. doing. Check right. out your boy. Right. You know, like, right. so I heard it. You know, I, right. I would see it and I right. hear it. And yeah, you were you were hot. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it, it's it's. <laughs> I damn near killed a couple of people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My son was sick. He had the, my daughter. My my everybody I work with. They shut down comedy <laughs> because I passed out at the stage. When I was in the hospital, I passed out actually in 
um, Nashville, got home, passed out again, had to go to UCLA. When I got to UCLA on Tuesday, I'd passed out. I think that was a Friday in Nashville. Monday, I'd gotten home, passed out again, had to go to UCLA. It was a young man, 26 years old, that died from COVID. Mm. He was a kid. You know, I was playing around with the nurse and I was like, oh, they're giving out iPads. <laughs> and she went, no, this is so he can say goodbye to his family. So uh-huh. when I hear people saying shit that was just so patently not true, it was ridiculous to me. And it's, it's funny. I don't care how, lo- how, how, how long you went to school. All you got to do is say you're a PhD on the Internet and motherfuckers believe you. I'm mm-hmm. like, and so I, that, that where I, that's where I took umbrage with it. But I don't I don't necessarily feel bad about People are going to make their own choices. I think that uh, I made mine, and uh, I'm, I'm confident and secure in the one I made. Yeah. You mentioned your son, Kyle. Mm-hmm. Kyle has Asperger's. Yes. Right? And you often include him in your show. Right. And it's funny as hell. I'm going to just go right. ahead and say it. I don't think <laughs> I should be feeling guilty by laughing at your daddy laughing. But do, do you ever get any backlash from your your wife about sure. that? Sure, she can go home and cry in a pile of money. Like, what <laughs> she can. These are not single experiences, right? Yeah. So they're shared experiences, right? And right. and just like you, a creator, I'm a creator. Uh, I think that there are things that people rather I, I not talk about, but but I think that if it's in my purview, if, if you're living in my house, the least you could do is let me is is, is is be a part of what pays the bill. So no, I don't I don't feel bad. I think. Like any um, dynamic, it can be strained based on the information people want to hold, you know, closer to the vest. But I don't, I don't necessarily feel bad. About it. Well, what about when you are including jokes about Ladonna? She doesn't like that. Sure. <laughs> but no, no. But, but you know, um, like I said, it's shared experiences. Uh, she has her version of it. I have mine, and um, I, I'm, I'm a the kind of artist that likes to include or is. Um, you know, I'm a sayer of C. I I see what I say. I say what I see. And uh, she's, I see her a lot. I interact with her a lot. My experiences are based on the, my uh, conversations are based on experiences I have. And she happens to take up a great deal of space. Does she ever like fire back at you with her? Yeah, but no, she ain't got a microphone. Who cares? She's nobody going to hear but me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, quite often. Yeah. Quite often, yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. I'm nowhere near as verbose at home as I am on stage. Let's uh-huh. just say that. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm nowhere that's, near as brave at home as I yeah. am on stage. Yeah, that's, that's dope. That's dope. It, the biggest story in sports right now is Deion Sanders. Yes. Colorado Buffaloes. Right. What's your take on that? I, I think it's, you know, it was funny because Deion has always wanted to be a coach. I mean, he coached his... Uh, he coached Pee Wee, then he coached co- high school, then he coached, uh, you know, he coached in um, it, it, at uh, HBCUs, and now he's here. And I think it makes sense that if you're a great player, you probably would be a great teacher. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I thought that it, he he disrupted an idea that because you went to a uh, you were a coach of a certain um, school that you couldn't coach at this level. It was it was a way that they used to keep black people out. Of coaching, it's 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 the same as when they didn't want you to vote. They had poll te- taxes and tests and all those kind of things. And I think he's done remarkably well. I think you can't. I mean, but when you do an Affleck commercial and get beat by the Ducks, it's, 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 <laughs> uh, I think he played well. I, I think what he did against the Trojans was brilliant. Like uh, they were up. And then he ran an offense that made him speed up and use the altitude to charm. It was easy. It was, but it was. He's a brilliant guy, one of the best football players that ever existed. Chances are, he's going to be a pretty good coach. Yeah. Well, I want to challenge you on that theory. Sure, I want to challenge you. Okay, because I've seen a number of great oh, athletes. Yeah. yeah, I mean the best of the best. Sure, and they sure, just sure. don't oftentimes make good. Most coaches. times they don't. So that's what makes Dion particularly special. Mm-hmm is that he knows how to tap into that athlete's psyche sure. and get the best out of sure. them, not just on the field, but in life. Sure. Well, we don't know yet. Like, So here's the thing. I'm very excited about the potential what Dion is doing 
But I think that the idea that, you know, some people call him the greatest coach. I'm like, come on now. We got to it's, it's a it's a short litmus test and he's going to have his victory. He's going to I think that no matter what happens this season, he's already elevated Colorado. So right. he's already won. I don't imagine that he's going to stay there long because if 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 he keeps being as successful as he is, he's going to elevate. They're coming. They're yes. coming. <laughs> They're going to elevate. Yeah. And and so that's the one thing about Dion. Dion. Uh, he played at San Francisco. I played at Dallas. I played at Atlanta. He gonna go. He gonna go with a getting his good. So, I think that it's bet it's best to enjoy him, and um, to be ready for the fact that when it's time to sin, he will. We know why some people hate Dion. People who don't look like Dion. Why right. they hate Dion? Right. But why do you think that people who look like Dion, who probably have similar backgrounds to Dion, right. hate Dion Sanders so much? I, I don't. I don't know why anybody would hate anybody who is just being who they are. Like Dion is has always been exactly who he is, and it's rare that you get to take what you want to do and retrofit that with who you are. So I I don't really can't get into the mindset of why anybody would hate anybody who's authentically themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that there's probably a measure of self hate for them, probably, yeah. but or a jealousy. But to me, to hate a man who's who was blessed to find out exactly who he was and to fashion that into a livelihood and a brand is spectacular, and it's to be a lot. And I think we could learn more from that than be detracted by. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this is what I want to know. Uh, I we've been friends for over thirty years. I said thirty. You said I was I was shortchanged, so yeah. it's almost forty now. But okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just say we say better over thirty. That way, okay, even let's if it's round 50, it up. Okay, let, yeah, yeah. Hell, let's let's say twenty five. <laughs> so we both get younger. No, no, twenty five is twenty five. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But but I've always just been fascinated by your mind. Like you have an abstract, what I was calling an abstract mind. You think very much, like most comedians, you think outside of the box, but sure. you you even further to the left or further to the right, right? <laughs> whatever makes you comfortable. But you you have a, a certain a, a thing, like like you were just talking about Deion right, Sanders right, right. Uh, getting beat by, you right, know, like having right, an Aflac right, commercial and right, getting beat by some ducks. Right, you right. know, that, that like, we, we know he has an like I know he has an Aflac right, commercial. Right. I know he got beat by some ducks. Right. But I didn't put the two together. Yeah. Well, I, have I know great... he got beaten by the Oregon Ducks, but I didn't <laughs> put the two together and say. You I know. have the great thing about the process that we're in right now is you have to have like minded. Like I, I surround myself with people who really know my mind and how it works, and so you have a creative brain trust. Um, and somebody will come up with a joke or somebody will come up with a through line or you'll be in conversations. And and so if you surround yourself with people who are always thinking and firing stuff off, chances are your mindset is going to be um, more amenable to having conversations. It's, it's the best thing in the world is to talk to crazy ass comedians um, when they don't have anything at stake. And if you surround yourself in an environment where that's that's pretty prevalent, you're gonna hear and say and do some things that are that are kind of, uh, that are kind of contrary to people. So, it's it's I think you have to be immersed in an environment where people are thinking differently, acting differently, and saying things that are just not the norm. You know where the best conversations happen with comedians in the green room? Yeah. Yeah, like I, I, yeah. Live, I like I like watching the show, right? But I like to go right in that green room right. and have those private right. conversations. Right. People would be amazed at some of the conversations, and probably people would uh, probably a lot of niggas be in jail too. But <laughs> 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 I, I, I think that that's the thing about comedy for me right now is I literally think it's in a battle um, with a mindset um, that is trying to bring, I think, creativity to heal. I think it's trying to bring a certain mentality to heal. I think it would be all right with me if we were the kind of place that really was well-intended. But I think people want quiet. They don't want solutions. Mm. They want, like, if something has in the police department, we know that people are corrupt. They'll fire those policemen, but not change the system. And they'll go, see, we did these things. <laughs> Society's like that, too. They don't really care how you think. They just want you to say it. 
Like these corporations, you know, somebody will do something or say something ra- racist, and it'll be in the corporate environment. They go, we don't condone this, and then they get rid of that person. But the structure hasn't changed. Right. And, and I think the one thing about what we do, and I think that that is very prevalent everywhere, and I think when they try to do that in the entertainment industry, especially in the comedic space, it's an environment where we're supposed to be able to be profane and profound. We're supposed to be able to say things that people aren't saying. It's like when somebody hears something you say on stage at another performance and they get mad. Motherfucker, that's a that's like wearing a suit that's tailor-made for somebody and getting mad that it doesn't fit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. This, that suit, that, that, that performance was for that specific audience, that interaction was very specific. It was tailored to that, to that experience. And now people want to take a joke or to take a mindset. And I think part of the great thing about being comedy, you're not supposed to know if I'm serious or not. Because we're so used to tipping the joke. We're so used to saying just kidding or LOL. Um, that's the way we are wired now. But people want to know if you're serious or not. And I don't think that that's... Why would a, why would a, a magician show you his magic? Hmm. Why would he tell you? Why would he give you the blueprint? Why would a chef give you his recipe? It's, 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 but I think when there comes to the things that come to this society, the things that people observe about it, they're very um, insistent on trying to have a certain mindset be, be, be evocative, be spoken about. And I think as a comedian, uh, as, or as any artist, you got to kind of just be willing to take the, 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 accept the notion that people aren't going to always like or accept or appreciate what you do. Yeah, and when you take that evocative, it's too far. What in that in that heat come? You yeah. know, like, what do you do in that situation? Nothing. What is there to do? So I'm a horrible person because I told a joke you didn't like. <laughs> so that's, you know what I mean? You know me a long time. I've defended people who don't have, who I, uh, I can't stand what they say. I don't like them at all. But the notion that we have freedom of speech means that people are occasionally going to say things that I don't like. And that only that's the only, that's the definition of freedom. We're going to have to say things that people don't like and people are, and accept that people are going to say things that we don't like. But this idea that we're all supposed to think alike and act alike and believe alike uh, in, in a homogeneous society, which uh, isn't even real. Um, I, I just, I, I don't take it seriously. But should there be limitations on what people can say? Like, like in, in a, in a civilized society where... We're not a civilized where, society. Where certain words can, yeah, in a fake, in a, a right. kind of trying to be a civilized society, <laughs> right. you know, are there certain things that people should not say to protect them, protect them from themselves and others? I think that, that you have to be the arbiter of that. Like okay. my line ain't your line, and and someone else's line may not be mine. Mm-hmm. But this no, but there's not a collective that tells us what we can say or not. Like now there are people who are banning books, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they're banning books, and many of the people who ban these books don't even read them. But um, on the auspice, under the idea that, that it changes mindset. Now, if fifty out of the fifty books that are banned, not one of them is Hitler's Mein Kampf. And the, actually, a lot of people who do, who do who, who commit mass murders and shoot up schools, they read Mein Kampf and they're inspired by it. Um, but that book is not banned. But Maya Angelou is. So a school shooter reads Mein Kampf. That's not banned. My uh, that's not banned. But Maya Angelou. I don't know why a cage bird sing, but I know why he duck. And hmm. I think we're trying to homogenize society to the extent. That it makes people who are lying to us comfortable. You know, that's one of Kanye West's favorite books. I bet. Yeah, I bet. You know, Kanye, I bet. Kanye is a big Hitler fan. Him he and is. Candace Owens. He is. They are. They are. Why are they so revered? I had so many because I think that anytime you say things, I I just and I say this out loud. I despise people who despise my people. I despise mm-hmm. people who. So you could say how great some. I don't. I've no. I've never known anybody that wrote a, de- a, a lyric so deep or a, 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 a uh. beat so cold that it made me forget how much you Come hate my on, people. Man. I've never man. seen it. Come so, on, man. and I think the, the funny thing about that, and that's music is like that. I mean, the minister of music, you know, um, was so mesmerizing. He was so talented um, that he talked angels into attacking God. <laughs> he talked angels into fighting for heaven. That's how talent is. That's what that's what talent can do. That's what light can do. So if it can make if 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 talent can make an angel believe that he's God and get other angels to attack, 
It can make people turn on themselves. It can make people believe things. It can make people say things. He's a very talented man, and I hate when people go, well, you know, his mother died. You know, in the grand design, all of our mothers will die, and that's if it's the best-case scenario, that they die before we do, and you'll die before your children do. But what we never do is, and that's a horrible thing, And I, but there are people who haven't t been able to take life's losses, and they're on under underpasses and they're in psych wards and they're and they're outcasts all across our our and our empathy and sympathy is not uh, relegated to them because they don't write thing that make they don't do something to make us feel good it's i guarantee you it's somebody if, if if a large percentage of the people that are homeless in america have served this country and militarily they've seen some pretty horrible things you don't make excuses for them they go to jail. They still homeless. They we don't have we don't we don't allot them the same amount of empathy as we do somebody who is talented. Mm -hmm. You know why? You know why? It, that is because sometimes uh, when you're very very talented, you know you're right there on the cusp of genius. People become so enamored by sure. your talent that they elevate you above criticism. Sure, sure. And they will sacrifice their convictions right. for entertainment. Right. That's They'll sacrifice their convictions for anything. And anything, right. You know, you know what's interesting? People could not accept the fact that Bill Cosby had done these things, right? And it wasn't because of him. It's because of Cliff Hustable. Now, I, I submit to you, Cliff didn't do it, but Bill damn sure did. So it's, it's to me, you can be so talented. And, and one of the things for us, that's how good black people need to feel good. I mean, remember when Black Panther was out? And uh, everybody's wearing daishikis and everybody's going to see it and everybody's uber proud. It was interesting that that's how bad we needed to, to, to feel good, that we took a Marvel character and lionized it, you know. This is it's about this imaginary kingdom where they were, you know, ahead of technology and math. That was real. That already happened. <laughs> you could only accept it in a comic book form, but that already happened. And so I think, although I believe that people are inspired, I think that one of the reasons that uh, so many black women went on to co uh, secondary education in colleges and are by far the most educated segment of America is because of Cosby, and, and they were inspired by entertainment. So I don't knock it, but I think that when you, when R. Kelly was doing he, what he was doing all these years, and everybody in radio knew it, and the audiences knew it to a greater or lesser degree, but it took seeing it on a documentary before people re responded. How is it that our our eds our our uh, our moral moral compass is connected to a to a, a remote? Like it wasn't real until you got to press play and see it over and over again when you knew it already, and that's because people are blinded by talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're an optical people too. Sure, you know we we have to, and we get caught up in, in symbolism. Mm -hmm. And speaking of symbolism, uh, I need to know your thoughts on this. Uh, I personally think that Kamala Harris, our vice president, mm -hmm. is uh, uh, just a token. I don't believe that she was was hired, put in that place to do anything substantial that was going to enrich well, well, black then, people's then lives. You, then, then, you're, then you have a counter narrative uh, to history because that's exactly what you select the vice president for. We're talking about the job she's selected to do. She was selected to be a vice president. How many vice presidents have ever gone on to become president? They're understudies. That's really that's the definition. Well, you got to be involved in the murder of the president in order to be become right. the president. But but if you're vice the president. notion is you're never going. Tom Brady would never pick a quarterback as good as him to be his backup. Never, right. never. Nobody. How Aaron Rodgers leaves teams because they pick talent. Why why do they leave? Because they don't want anybody who's as talented as them in their space. It is unfair. To, to believe, either you're politically naive or obtuse, if you believe that a, uh, a, a vice president has any power at all, they're, 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 they're figureheads. They go do the shit that the people don't want to do. That is why it's subsequently hard. Mike Pence is a vice president. He can't get no traction right now, can he? Dan Quayle was a vice president. Can't get no traction right now. 
you know, uh, 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 Bill Clinton's uh, uh, vice president can't get no traction because people. And the only reason that that uh, Joe Biden is president is because Trump was so horrible that they went double back. Vice presidents never very rarely become president. Very rarely. George Bush's father became president and did one term. So I, I talked about voting for Biden, right? Sure. I shared with people that I did vote sure. for Biden. And sure. that, that is because, like millions of other people, I had the mentality of anybody but Trump. Sure. Okay. So I know that you voted, you know, uh, for, well, I think you voted for Biden also. Of course. Right? And, um, and speak to him often. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, since you speak to him often, tell that sucker I said. No, I'm just kidding. No, no. But, yeah, uh, yeah. No, 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 I ain't got nothing to say to him. But anyway, um, when you vote for, for Biden, uh, a vote for Biden, some people say, well, you're still voting for the lesser two evils and he ain't going to do nothing for us either. Now, my idea of voting for Biden was to shuffle the deck. Just like when you playing sure, cards. Sure, sure. You know, you're playing, sure. you know, what they call it, Peter Pad or something Man, like Pity that? Peter Pad. Yeah. You you shuffle the deck, right. you shuffle the deck right. until you get the good cards that you want. Right. So my idea was like, let's get him in, let's make sure sh Trump don't right. get in, get him in, shuffle the deck right. on the next uh, next right. election, mm -hmm. and then let's try to get somebody in there better, you know, and, until, until we get it right. Uh, I'm really when I really take a look at the political landscape, uh, the only person that's really qualified to lead the country is me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much the only Because I'm going to say what it is, man. I'm signing executive orders daily, well, man. Well, you know I'm, what? I'm signing 100 executive orders every I love you, but I disagree. I I'm disagree. signing executive orders. I don't orders. think you, although I think you may be hey, qualified. I look out for you. I'm your dog. Of course, I look I, out for you. I don't think you'd be the only one, but I'll say this. I hear these arguments about, oh, he's too old. If you, I defy you. If we're talking about political accuracy, mm -hmm. you can't think of a president in the modern era who's been more... Uh, who, had, who has more? Who had more legislative successes with less um, p power? He had a very limited amount of power in the uh, a very small majority in the Congress and the Senate, and was able. He did something on guns. He did something on climate. He got an infrastructure bill passed. When I hear people, the economy under under George, uh, Donald Trump, uh, excuse me, under under uh, Joe Biden, is about eight times what it was under under Trump. When people talk about Trump, oh, I made a lot of money on Trump. Yeah, because you sat at home and you got you got stimulus checks and you didn't have to work, right? And your rent was free. So, of course, but you got that because he was such an inept leader. You Let's not forget that people are dead because some dude when said, you know, uh, sunshine will kill a virus. That We had a leader that said that shit. So, when I hear and people he say, say something that, also about Clorox, Clorox and bleach, box. right? So, so <laughs> let's 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 take a. Also, when this infrastructure bill, manufacturing in a, in in the United States, manufacturing construction, where there is in America, it has gone up exponentially. As you don't have to look at me, look at the financial projections. These these this chips program, where they're building these batteries, Texas is getting a lot of them. Uh, 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 Ohio, Pennsylvania, places that even Ohio, Pennsylvania, the Rust Belt, people where they have to build these factories. Who do you think going to get those jobs? And that, and he did that, and nobody else uh, was able to accomplish something like that. Everybody talked about an infrastructure bill. He did it. Now, if you're talking to me about how old he is, I, we, we can't argue that. But I will say this. I don't care how old a president is because he gets two terms. If you, if you, That same litmus test needs to be applied to the Supreme Court who get to die in office while they fucking shit up. Mm. So if we're going to talk about get, get rid of old people, let's get rid of them. If there's going to be an age, the date certain where people age out, then don't tell me I'm worried about an old president when you're going to watch Supreme Court judges who are going to make these decisions that are antiquated and not beholden to anybody for the, the entirety of their life. Has Biden ever fallen asleep, uh, fallen asleep while he was talking to you? Well, I tell you what, you fell asleep while you was talking to me, too. <laughs> so that, I'll fall asleep. So, don't, you don't want to talk to me because we'll fall asleep so doing this thing. Yes, he's falling asleep. Sure. So, so sure. you're talking on the phone with him. You said, Mr. No, President. No, he's never. No, he he's go, never. Done. No. <laughs> no, that was probably me. That's probably me. No, I just, I just, I think, I think when I see the things that are happening, um, first off, I don't believe that a man who took an oath to the Constitution and violated it in front of our eyes should ever be in that office again. Imagine you get fired from a job, 
you violently t- 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 uh, try to take that job back. And then you're the number one candidate for that job. Pete Rose can't even get in the Hall of Fame for fucking gambling. You couldn't, name me another job, you could do what he did. You, if you did what he did and you were uh, accused of 91 felonies and a rape charge and fraud, this is how, I'm not, this, I mean. Multiple rape charges. What, you couldn't work at White Castle, damn the White House. Mm-hmm. You couldn't, you literally, you couldn't do what he's doing in any parlance, in any, in any segment of life. You couldn't be a teacher. You couldn't be a police officer. You couldn't be a banker. You could not walk in there with that shit on your resume and keep a job. But you are eligible to be the. the, the you know that he can't even buy a gun because he's a he's a he's he has felony charges pending. He can't buy a gun, but, but he, he can run for president. Bought, but didn't he just buy a gun? He somebody didn't. was he saying that somebody, he, he went in to try to buy said, a gun. He can't buy a, a gun. Glock. He said, "Oh, I should get one of these, nigga. You can't. You a fucking. <laughs> you, you you have ninety one <laughs> felony charges pending. You can't buy a gun." The dude tried to overthrow the government, right. bro. And and then we're still having an argument Police about Police officers were killed right. in the process. Right. Like, he should have been charged with murder. I think so. And, a RICO. And, that's, that's a RICO charge. And, well, he got one in Georgia. And the thing about, the thing that's interesting to me is we all saw it. Don't talk to me about law and order. You watch what they, or dress codes in the yeah. Congress. You watch this man try to overthrow the will of the American people. Over and over again in several situations. And now he's going to take an oath to defend the Constitution. He shit all over. Stop. He stole America's secrets. For what? We know he did it. We see him. You know, yeah, Biden's son is a crackhead. But who don't have a crackhead uh, (laughs) that they love? Like, literally. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) Who doesn't, like, honestly, who doesn't have a crackhead in their family that they love? You, you know, you, you're absolutely right. I know I got a few. Not, of course. Not I got a few. But I, I, I will say it is rather hilarious to know that the, a sitting president has a crackhead son. Absolutely. That is some funny shit it to is, me. It is the best shit. Here's the thing. I think that it's wrong to elevate people to deity status. He's a man doing a job, Right. And obviously, I would like people who are younger or more adept. Like, I love uh, uh, the governor of uh, California. I love the governor of, uh, of, um, of, of Michigan. Um, but the way the political structure is set, it's very hard for an incumbent, anybody to lose. Look at all the senators it's hard to beat. You know how hard it is to beat an incumbent president? Oh yeah, it's, it's absolutely. It's a, hard. So yeah. even if you, even if you, it's it's so hard to do it that it practically never happens. You got to be either George Bush or Donald Trump to lose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to be that bad to lose. And so um, it's interesting to have people have these conversations. And it's I, I understand where my convictions lie, and I understand what I believe. And I I know I'm a liberal, so of, of course I'm going to elevate those who I think. Uh, reflect my ideology. Um, if you are conservative, I, you, I expect you to do the same. But there, there are a group of people who are attacking our history right now. Our right to exi- like our right to chart the course of of our, our our existence here. They're trying to take it away from us, and using it as a political color. The one thing that on the, the highest on a lot of people's political agenda is to stop wokeism. <laughs> now. <laughs> I don't understand how not learning about Harriet Tubman is going to put food on your table. I don't understand how um, eroding black history is going to make gas prices lower or get you a job or stop your schools from being underfunded. But that is that is what people will do uh, in lieu of good ideas. They will elevate hate and separation and destruction as opposed to doing things that are eff- effective for the populace. You mentioned Governor Gavin over in California uh-huh. uh, earlier. Uh-huh. Uh, do you think that uh, he's doing enough to stop these uh, smash and grabs that's going on all over I, California? I, I, I think that's a city uh, 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 ordinance thing. And I think that when you look, here's the thing. Everybody looks at those smash and grabs, right? More people... More retailers lose merchandise from employees that steal than they do 
random and, and just run of the mill shoplifting that they do that. But it has become the symbol of what's wrong in retail. Retail is in a lot of trouble for a lot of reasons. Mm-hmm. Even before they were smash and grab, you couldn't go to a, a a store and not and get shampoo without somebody coming and give you the combination to the safe. Mm-hmm. But it's funny how interesting those people that smash and grab they sell those things to people. They don't just wear them. They get crowbars, they get clothes, they get uh, purses, and they sell them to people. They they, they just know I'm a, I'm gonna take these jackets or these uh, these uh, purses, drop this off, and it's gonna go to somebody, and they're gonna cut me a check. So yes, that's bad. But find the motherfuckers who are paying them to do it. Yeah, and the thing is too is that like yeah, they're doing a lot of robbing and looting, but the biggest robbers and loot looters are members of Congress and and those who work in corporate America and at these banks. Right. They are the biggest, like, why these guys are getting a few thousand dollars right. when they go do a smash right. and grab. These guys are smashing and grabbing daily hundreds of millions and nobody of dollars from said, the American people. And nobody says anything. It's right. like, it's like, there should be no excuse why the American people aren't supportive of the labor movement in America. No reason. No reason. You watch it. We, we see CEOs whose, whose pay goes up exponentially. You don't say shit about that. And then they get the benefit of not paying. Not, not about that. But the dude who's driving a truck, you mad at. The actor who wants, you know, to be treated fairly, you mad at that. The dude who's making the car you drive in, you mad at that. There's no reason. The only reason any semblance of the middle class exists in this country is because of unions. Period. Otherwise, your ass would be... It, it, it would be kids in working in places. It would be dangerous situations far more than they are now. And the one thing I will say, there's a there's a reason why now all these labor movements are, are demanding and striking. It is because they have seen productivity has gone up. Um, the CEO's pay has gone up, but their wages are stagnant. Man, let me the, 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 the U, uh, UPS drivers, they were fighting to get heat and air in their trucks, man. Come on now. Mm hmm. Come on now. So I, I just think because we're so aspirational, everybody wants to be rich, you will give them more deference than you do the person that drops off your packages or or makes your car. But ultimately, all of us want to know that our work is rewarded. Mm-hmm. And, and, and there's a fair uh, sense of compensation and accomplishment. After COVID, one thing sure, people weren't going back to shitty job. They weren't going to be treated like they were before. And so the, the, there's a resurrection that without a death, there can't be a resurrection. And the, and the, and the mindset of the American labor uh, movement has been resurrected in a different direction. Yeah. You, 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 you're from Virginia, right? I, I was born, was in, Virginia. born in Virginia. I'm Virginia, from Los Angeles. But you, Los Angeles right. is home for the last, what are you, six, six decades? Uh, It'd be six decades <laughs> in four months, in five, in eight months. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I'm laughing and joking, yeah. but that's 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 an honor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yes, a privilege it is. Because especially when you consider where we come from. Yes, you know, and what and, we've and seen. What we've, yeah, what yeah. we've seen and, mm-hmm. and what we've done. Right. You know, like, I mean. Well, I don't know what you've done, Willie, but right. I'm telling you. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you know, like, yeah. well, you've done something. Yeah, I, 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 I few was you, things. Well, you, you was in the, in the bloods. I wasn't did. I wasn't So did. you did something. Yeah, I did a few things. Yeah. But you know what? It's so funny. We were talking last night in the green room. Um, that's the one thing I despise about where we are now is if we have taken some of the people, had taken some of the people who have, uh, been killed and unfortunately not here. And I'm not just talking about famous rappers or famous people, period. Imagine how different you are than you were then. The old you, the the old you would hate the new you. Like I hate who, I hate who I was. Yeah. I hated the way I reasoned. I hated the way I, th- I, th- I think. I would hate to meet the 25, 30, 30 year old me. He, it would be it would be repugnant to me, but imagine you got to have that continuum of experience where you land here. It's the shame is once you get past being stupid, it's a whole great life out here. But chances are, because of the environments we find ourselves in, a lot of people don't get to get past. They don't get to get, grow past stupid. Yeah, I think the I think maybe you meant to say this, but I think the new me would hate the old me. Well, yeah, or in yeah. Yeah, 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 because yeah, because I look back at the old me and I would be. I was like that guy. I, I think he can be reached. Yeah. But 
But if I'm going to reach out, right. I need to be careful how right. I reach out to him. He, it would it would have sickened you. This is just yeah. the way that you process things, the things you believed, the ideas in your head, and all you did is live and learn. That's all you did. Mm. And the shame is that so many of us don't get to. And imagine if Pac and Biggie were still around. Imagine, like, imagine what if... They, what they have been, Nipsey and... I mean, it's so many people. It's so you know, many... Like, and, so and, many and, people imagine, you know. you know, the kids that were cut off before, you know, in drive-bys or, or environmental sicknesses or the fact that live, young lives are, learned, are, 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 are lost in that cauldron of bullshit that we find ourselves living in makes me sad. And I lament the fact because... When you get to be a certain age and you're a black man, you've beaten the odds. Yeah. And let me ask you this. Do you have any trepidation about speak, reaching out to, to some of the youngsters because of your past? Like the things that you've I feel disingenuous. Yeah, I feel yeah. like I'm lying. Hey, like well, I, why is that? Because I got the GED. What am I going to do? Uh, go to people and tell them to get educated? What am I going to do? Like it's, it seems... Uh, hypocritical to me to, to walk up to young brothers and tell them um, that there's a better way. Now, now, here's why I think that you should reassess that. If I come from around the corner and I'm bleeding profusely and I say, man, don't go around there. They stabbing right. everybody that's running around that goddamn right. corner. They stabbing them. Right. And you say, well, they ain't stab me. They right. stab you. Right. Let me go my ass. Right. And you get to right. take your little happy right. ass. Would right. you really go around that corner? Most people would not go right. around that corner Most if they see wouldn't. you bleeding pro right. profusely. Right. So why would you do that if somebody has experience? I know if people do it because they think it ain't going to happen to them. Most they think, people. They right. think that. The insurance know, industry is built on that, yeah. It doesn't matter how many yeah. drug dealers come into to right. the world. Right. And how many go down. Right. How many get maimed. Right murdered, spend Paralyzed. decades. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Every dealer thinks it ain't gonna be them. that it ain't going to happen to right. them or they're a little bit smarter right. than all these other guys. Right. And the only way you're going to be a, like, like, like retire as a drug dealer with all of the money in the house on the hill is that if it's government sanctioned, you're going to have yeah. to have it the government going to have to sign your checks. And a whole lot of people to tell on. <laughs> yeah. A whole lot of people, yeah. Something along those lines, yeah. you might have a shot. But it's no way possible you're going to be standing on that corner. But look at all the things now. Like, we talk a lot. We like to eat good. We talk good. We laugh good. I could never fathom being this way when I was younger. And now right. I can't, I couldn't fathom being that when... When where I'm at now, I couldn't. I never thought that I would be blessed to see some of the things I've seen. I never would have thought it. And it's a beautiful thing to watch the next iteration of you, your grandchildren, and your to to. It's it's a beautiful thing, and I think that if people knew what was on the other side of the bullshit they were going through, I think they walk differently. Yeah. And I think one of the things society is complicit in is snuffing out any semblance of the idea of a future and hope. Like you talk What's, to young, young brothers right now, young dudes right now, they don't even know what tomorrow is going to be like because they, they haven't even shaped that idea in their minds. What's on the other side of black men who disparage black women collectively? The I, ones who say, I hate them. Do you know what's so funny? Part of the reason I, I despise who I was is because of a mentality that I had, particularly about women. You know what I mean? Okay. How dismissive I was. Um, how uh, some of the things... Now, I'll, I'll never apologize for a joke, but I am sorry for some of the things I believe to be true and some of the ways I acted. And so part of what we find ourselves, this patriarchy thing where women... I, part of that... I, you know anybody who who who's uh, said or done anything that contributes to it is is a part of it. You know I can't pretend like I didn't do or say things that contribute to a, a scenario we find a situation we find ourselves in now. So that's part of one of the things that I dislike about myself. But I think if you know better, you know, and I don't want to I don't want to uh, you know make an excuse for uh, you know uh, the things I said and believed and did. Um, because they happen, and I and I I take 
ownership of them, and and obviously I can tell you how sorry I'm. That doesn't you know that doesn't give me a, a pass. But I think if you know better and you do it. There's an entirely different scenario than if you do. Like, there are gradations of murder. There's manslaughter, there's sec- first degree, second degree. So, like, even in the taking of a life, there are ways that it's viewed. There's a difference between me just wantonly killing somebody or killing someone in self-defense or having to spur of the moment. Just like there's a difference in having this mind, these mindsets. If you are informed, or you should be. And one of the things is now, the only things you don't know is what you don't want to. Hmm... The only things you don't know is what you you can Google. You could Google how to make a, a a bomb, a tie a bow tie. You could you know. There's all the information is literally in your fingertips. So the information about how um, to uh, to interact with people and how to treat people and how to develop a better understanding of people is available too. And if you don't access it, I think that that to me is deliberate. I think that you can't say that you didn't do it on purpose. Can you have that's willful? That's a willful act to me. Yeah, and and not to belabor the the line of questioning, but is that the reason why it's so important to you to defend black women? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I. I but in in a way, to me, sometimes people have a problem with the way you love them. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, the bravest thing I think anybody ever does is love someone. But sometimes the way I love you isn't the way you want to be loved. But all I got is what I get. All mm-hmm. I got is what I got in my inventory. It doesn't mean I'm not going to make jokes. It doesn't mean I'm not going to say But The one thing I take umbrage with is every time you say something about somebody, you talk about black women. No, no. I'm talking about this particular individual who I have a problem with. And I refuse to see the notion that I can't, I can't make an assessment of somebody without it having been in the collective. Do you find it like? Do you, are you aware that like? And I'm not picking on women, but women seem to women seem seem to take up for other women, even if that woman might be that person you're describing as right. doing something dirty right. or low down. Right. For example, a woman could actually be a hoe. Right. Right. She right. could actually be a hoe. Right. Like, definition meaning right. that. She go out and she sleep right. with a whole bunch right. of men. That's right. what she do. Right. And she's proud of it. Right. She might even get paid for doing it. Right. And she'll brag about right. doing it. Right. But if a man say something about her, no, you can't say right. anything. But if you flip the script, if a man, or, you know, if a woman says something about a man who's a hoe, mm-hmm. living life like that, you know, giving up his, you know, Sleeping with a whole bunch of different right, women right. and and acting reckless and right. perhaps he don't take care of his kids or whatever. Right. Whatever, everybody got. Yep, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like the, the, we can accept a woman saying like if she specified right. that man, if right. she don't say men, right. all men or whatever, we okay with that. We right. can say yeah, that she talking about right. him, not me. Right. Why is it that? <laughs> why is it that women like will collectively just take up for all women? Yeah, and, and, and disp- here's the thing. I think they do themselves a disservice when they try to take up for the the, the chick that's I, living a certain style. I think and, that and, what I've learned is that a lot of people, the people that we see on the internet or writing these blogs or these articles, aren't indicative of the you know of, of the population at large. You know what I'm saying? Because we can, you know. People will go, man, my, uh, you know, people on my timeline said, oh, I heard this, or people ask me. So it's, it's a very small sample size. I will say um, that when you when you where we are, I love you, you love me. I've had problems with you, what you do. You've had problems with what I do. That doesn't mean that I don't respect you or I don't love you or that, that I don't. I think that they think it's a total package. A lot of people who tend to think that way think that it's a zero-sum game. I can I have to accept all of something or I can't accept any of them. Right. There are people who do problematic things. And I resent the notion that if you estimate if you estimate those things as problematic that somebody owns the verbiage that you tend to use. Well you you shouldn't call it out call- listen, I don't use my words frivolously. I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. And I I don't I, I don't plan on reporting to a collective to tell me what that means. But I do, I like the idea of being unified about it, but not in bullshit. Did that come from, what is it, how do you pronounce it? Is it Portsmouth or Portsmouth? <laughs> it's Portsmouth. Huh? It's Portsmouth. It's Portsmouth. Yeah. Did that come from Portsmouth? I, I, I was there weeks, man, so I... Okay. It came from the mentality. But, that's, but that, is, that is the root. 
the root is that but you that were born, I, but, but you were born in Portsmouth, but you raised in in LA. Right, right. But so more than anything, it was that I was raised by a man and a woman. Um, regardless of how I feel about you know that, I was raised by a man. Like you ever heard the expression, "I was right, raised right, but I did wrong." Mm-hmm. So I knew right from wrong. I just chose to do wrong for a very long time. Wow. But it didn't mean, because it was fun, and I just, <laughs> okay. it, it was fun. It's yeah. it's way more fun to eat bad than to eat good. It's way more fun to sleep than to exercise. It's way more f- fun to be reckless than it is to be a positive contributing member. It's way more fun. But the things that make you, uh, I think, uh, a man are doing the things you don't want to do. Mm. Like what, the, you, children have dessert first. You know, children got to eat, you know, only children and women um, have to have certain things. And and I'm not trying to denigrate them. I don't want it to go left. But only women and children need as much uh, uh, distraction as 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 only them. Because at a certain point when you're a man and you want to become a man, you understand that there are things you need to give up to do that. There's a reason why men die seven to eight years, 17 to 18 years longer. They died seven to 10 years before women do. Because part of being a man means that you're going to do and put yourself in situations and go through stresses and strains that literally shorten your life. That's part of the gig. Yeah, and that is because, you know, pressure is for shoulders, not hips. Yep. Yeah, That's, yeah it is. And so... No one need. You know what? I've never heard one black man in any conversation I've ever had. I want to be safe. Safety is something you give. It's a notion that you want to provide for your maybe your community or your woman or your children. But it isn't something you feel like. It's like Moses mm-hmm. didn't never never knew he was. He he never he knew he wasn't going to the promised land. I think a lot of us are like that. Yeah. You ain't never. We ain't never been a kind of, man. It ain't. Safe. I don't want to. Be. Yeah, I'm right. not saying that we don't understand what safety is. Right. We just think it's an abstract concept for us, and it's more. It's such an abstract concept. It's something we give and, not, and don't necessarily uh, give and not necessarily take the take the uh, benefit of. Okay, I'm about to drive the car off the cliff. What do you think about? <laughs> what <do> you... <laughs> I can tell this nigga can't do something. I can tell. Got me in this moody <laughs> ass room. I can tell. <laughs> what do you take? What do you think about Taylor Swift and and this guy Travis uh, Kelsey? I you don't. know, and this this thing with all these people they selling out t shirts everywhere they go. I don't. People are following them. I don't think you, about you don't care. Uh, about not that. not not one bit. <laughs> not one bit. I, I will say this. Um, the, he had a black girlfriend, I guess. Right. Yeah, before, yeah. And now he's that with they, Taylor Swift. They had a long-term yeah, relationship. Yeah, I think they and, did and now people years. are saying, well, you know, did he upgrade? Listen, just because somebody has a lot of money and a lot of fame doesn't mean they scratch that itch you got. Like, look, Prince Charles was married to Diana, but he wanted, <laughs> he wanted what he wanted. So I don't think it makes it better, and I don't think it makes him, you know, necessarily have an upgrade. But I will say that... I don't understand why you talking shit if you didn't want this dude no more, and he's he's moving on. Mm. You, what, you, why are you even mentioning this dude? You didn't marry him. I think he left her. Yeah, that's what I'm. But but she, you see her in the interviews. Oh, he's a cheater. He's a, well, maybe he was that with you. You don't know that he's gonna be that with somebody else. But why are you shitting on somebody you ain't with? Taylor Swift don't have the same drawbacks you do. I'm pretty sure Taylor Swift will write a song about your ass and be gone. She don't. She don't need that. So I just think there, there's it's salacious because he was with a black woman. He's a football player. She's a pop star. It's, it's, it's like this cauldron of bullshit that I don't really pay a lot of attention to. But I do think it's interesting that you know in the zeitgeist, people are are, are mesmerized by a couple, you know. Young couple ha- hanging out, having a good time. Well, speaking of young couples hanging out, having a good time, what's your take on the Tory and Megan situation? And and, and let me say this also that mm-hmm. I, you know I've heard some of what you said about right. Megan, and right. I do appreciate you know how you stood up for her. You know, 
And right. I and I appreciate how you stand up for black women in general. Uh, Tory shot Megan. Yeah. It's my estimate. Now I've had a conversation with uh, Tory's father for a very long time, and I got to tell you that he put a nuanced perspective on it that I hadn't considered. You know what I mean? But and I still told him I believe what I what I said to be true. Can you share that? I mean, I, I, you know, that's that's for him to say. But he, he from a religious perspective. I respected his father's purview. I still believe what I believe. It didn't mean that he, I was convert. Like he, I, I'm sure that he felt like he felt, and I felt like I felt. But I think mutually, I, w- I would. I don't think I'm out of uh, out of line in saying that I think that we came away with a mutual um, respect for our perspectives. Um, what I resent is she got shot. Somebody shot her. It looks like he did, right? By all the evidence, what the fuck does she do to deserve that? And what is she, the fuck does she do to be further victimized by that? Why is she the one? People writing songs about her from stage and saying the evil shit. I don't know her. I don't know her. I don't know her from anybody. I don't, I'm not a fan of her music. I don't know. But I know a woman got shot, and people act. Well, you know they were sleeping together. Most women in this country who get shot will be shot by somebody who fucked them, or said they loved them, or was intimately involved with them, or wanted them. But I think that when there is a situation like that, the way that I watch people who have already been victimized be victimized again sickens me, especially when grown men do it. And so yeah. I, I don't care if it's Tory shooting uh, when uh, Tory shot Megan or when Kanye shot Kim. I don't know either one of them. But I'm a fucking man, and, and I'm going to tell you what I believe. Now, you could like it or not, but that's my perspective. I think that... I hated that they did that to her. Mm-hmm. And I hate a lot of things I say. I'm not, I'm not a saint. I'm not on nobody's side. I'm just telling you my perspective. I can't. You know, I, I don't, I'm not going to change anybody's mind, obviously. But I think that she got shot. Somebody did it. And it looks by all the evidence like he did. And if he knows something that, that could exonerate him, I, I would get to doing it. I would get to, yeah. I would get to putting the evidence out. I think the worst thing that he did... Well, I won't even say the worst thing that happened. The worst thing that, um, the worst thing that happened to him to actually seal his fate was how his dad respond, responded on the court mm-hmm. steps. You know, I uh, to the courthouse that. steps. I talked to him about that. That dude. Let me uh, let me explain something to all you youngsters out there. If you end up. In court, you find yourself in the unfortunate position of being caught up in this system and you're, you know, you've, you're in court or whatever. You've just been found guilty of a crime. It is incumbent upon you to do yourself a favor and do not disparage the judicial system. Mm-mm. Do Unless you're Donald Trump. You can do it then. <laughs> well, you can do it then. But the rest of us, for the right. rest of us mere right. models, right. Uh, mortals, we have to acquiesce to the decision, fall back, and try to figure out a way to get some type of uh, relief by way of an appeal. Mm-hmm. And, you know, once you exhaust your appeals— And it's resolved, I mean, whether it's good or bad, once the case is fully resolved, then you want to show off, go ahead, say what you want to say. Go off, go off, off, but you do not do that while the jury is literally still out. I don't get, this is what I don't get. Los Angeles ain't Houston. You can't walk around with a gun in L.A. You can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't get it. It's it's a different part, and I don't understand why these young dudes put themselves in situations. I just don't... Un- and you know why I don't understand it? Because I didn't understand it when I was young, too. So I can't... I'm, we're looking at the older me in the rearview mirror talking to them. But all of us know that trouble finds you. You ain't got to look for it. If you drunk and you in a car and you got a gun... Maybe not that day, but pretty soon something's going to go horribly wrong. What did Tony Dungy say? He said nothing good. He said there are always three things. and A mm-hmm. woman, or a woman you don't know well, a woman you know, don't know, or a woman you know too well, uh, a gun, 
going over 60 miles an hour and being after 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> he said those are all bad things. Mm -hmm. And I'd be damned if they're not. Is sexy red a bad thing? Is sexy red bad? I, what do you think? I, I don't. It ain't. Come on, man. I don't. I, 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 don't, I, don't I, I don't. What do you think about sexy red? Not. I, I don't know her. I mean, I just. You know, I don't. Uh, I don't know her music. I don't. Ha have you seen? Uh, have you seen some of the her videos and all? You heard yes. some of her lyrics. Yes. What do you think about those lyrics? They don't score. I mean, to me, I mean, they don't land. I'm, I'm, it's not. It's not something I think about or resonates. Yeah. I think obviously she has an audience. Obviously, people dig her. I don't pass that. I don't. I don't really give it much credence. So you would not advise young ladies to listen to those lyrics. I think that. <laughs> I think that we live in a world where people get mad. Uh, at Santa Baby's Christmas song, at the same time, wet ass pussy is a hit. So I think we're a confused, <laughs> crazy okay. ass society. Okay. And so I just don't, I don't get a lot of this shit. And I'm like, I don't get it, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Suki Hana, what are your thoughts on Suki Hana? I, I don't get it. You don't get it? Mm -mm. I don't get it at all. But yeah. that doesn't mean, you know, <laughs> I I watch a lot of this shit and go, how the fuck is this happening? But it is, and 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 it has an audience, and people dig it. And which one? Which one had the brown booty hole? Uh, Man, now see, I'm not. Which one was that? <laughs> what, what I'm saying that you know. I know. What I'm saying. My that something brown. brown my what? Yeah, 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 yeah. I do. I do think it's interesting that oftentimes expression. You know, self-expression or owning your femininity is connected to, or or uh, you know, appear to be connected to things. I'm like, wow, you like. I heard somebody. I'm not gonna say her name. I felt so bad because she talked about her sexual exploits. Like she was saying that she got a yeast infection from being with three dudes in the same day. Like, who is that helping? Like how is I like honestly? Is, is that uh, I, I, was that Brittany Renner? I felt so bad for her that you, oh you said I'm not gonna say that. You, know, you but you did oh, okay, obviously. Okay. But I felt bad for her because she's young, and this is the situation that she finds herself in. And whether you know this or not, whether anybody knows this or not, those receipts are there. And if you are a woman who wants a relationship. Um, with somebody or to be married to somebody to have children in a family I don't know how those things who those things were for uh, who got the benefit from them I don't know why you felt necessary to self you know to self emoliate in front of people I, I just didn't get it it's like all them people thought freaking it was cool till the documentary came out now they're like uh uh <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> you know what I mean freaking it was the shit it? yeah of course how many times three four yeah you, and and you, you know when I went, them tapes, man. you know what I went when I went when I saw some shit. I went, you know what? I don't want to come here no more. It just was a after a while because first it was dope if you were artist. You hadn't seen it was dope, but then it got to be. I was like, some of this shit is against the law. <laughs> I'm not getting ready to be here for that. At, even even at a very young age. Yeah, shout out to uh, P. Frank uh, Williams. Who, Did you see how fast directed. people? <laughs> that motherfuckers was what they, they uh, filing lawsuits and injunctions lawsuits and left and right. Man, yeah, that's wild. That's wild. Are you uh, a gun owner? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. You believe in uh, assault rifles being able I do to not. be accessible? I do not. And why not? Because I think that. First off, the uh, the, the uh, amendment that they reference, the Second Amendment gives you, um, you know, obviously the right to bear arms, but a well-regulated militia. Now, what is a militia now? Generally, is <laughs> is it's not what they intended in in the in the in the Constitution. I don't understand. It didn't give you unfettered access to weapons like that. Weapons like that. If you shoot that, hunters don't need them. If you shoot that bad, where well, you need a hundred rounds. To kill anything, then you, <laughs> then you probably a Charlotte Hornet if you shoot that bad. But 
this notion that we can't be trusted with cold medicine, uh, we can't be trusted with various other kinds of drugs. There's, if you go to buy a Sudafed, they get your license, uh, ask you what it's, I mean, you basically, the assumption is that you're going to use it for illicit purposes, purposes if you buy to buy, go to buy more than a few packs of it. Guns you have unfettered access to? I never met anybody, anybody who stockpiles weapons like that is either preparing for a race war, waiting for the government to, to, to you know, to attack them and to think, or waiting till somebody pisses them off. What the fuck do you need a gun that kills that many people that fast on the streets of this country? What do you need it for? Because they got it. We, the reason you have those guns, because well, I can't have them. That don't mean you should. Well, we do a lot of things because we can. Exactly. Because I hear a lot of people saying yeah. stuff like that. Well, as long as you're not hurting anybody, you can do it. But he will like, eventually. Yeah, you can, you can spit on the ground right. uh, while people are walking behind right. you. That's not illegal. Right. But why would you do something right. like that? What do we need? Why are we the most number one cause of death of children in America, 1 to 19, is gun deaths. But we'll ban books, but not anything to make their life better. We're more worried about drag shows like RuPaul than a Ruger. I don't understand. I don't understand. What do you need that unfettered access to those? You can walk around in a fucking restaurant with an AR-15. On you. Why? Why? What's the point of it? It's an implied threat is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's cold-blooded, man. That's a cold game that they're playing out here. And then, so- and then you know what galls me is that school uh, uh, where in Texas where all those children got shot. And 400 police officers stayed out there and let them die. And the, what, was, what was the whole good guy with a gun then? It was 400 good guys with guns. Mm-hmm. Even, if they even, even if they, 400 people, were held at bay by one dude with a gun uh, and they were worried about their safety like that, why the fuck is it on our streets? If, four, if a dude, one dude, held out 400 officers, duly sworn officers, Fully armed, dogs, radios, guns, vests. What the fuck is it on our street for? Because we can't have it? That, that's silly to me. What do you think the chances are that that thing was orchestrated? Mm, I don't know. I think that when I hear things like that, the one thing I know for sure is that uh, almost two dozen children aren't going to never see their parents again. Yeah. So I don't know how it happened, what happened. I do know that uh, no matter what happened, um, those parents and families will live, and that community will live with the memory of that carnage for the rest of their lives. Yeah. R.I.P. to all who lost, uh, you know, who suffered losses. I was looking at your some of your work, man, and boy, it's dizzy. And bro, you have been putting in some work. I first met you in at Birdland. Mm-hmm. Years and, and years ago. And, and um Long, Long Beach. Beach. Yeah. Uh and you were you were hosting. Yeah. And since then I I've seen you on Comic View. I've seen you doing your own show, uh the D.L. Healy show. I saw you breaking news on CNN. Uh you did the Kings of Comedy, yeah. you done a, a few movies and all of this stuff, man. Like, is there a single uh accomplishment that you look besides like you know, having the beautiful children, that right, you right, have right, and, and you know the beautiful wife and everything. Right. Is that like a like a, a personal uh, career accomplishment you, that you that you feel like it's like the apex? I, I I can tell you honestly what it is is that I get to do it all over again. Mm. I get to do it all over again. I've been coming to Houston for a long time. People still come to see me. Yeah. I've been all over the country for a long time. People. So my greatest career accomplishment is that people trust me to do it again. Yeah. And so I. I take that very seriously. I'm very honored by that. And that it's, it's you know, you ain't good at nothing unless you get to do it all over again. Mm. And just like the secret to falling in love is to do it, falling in love over and over again, standing in love is to fall in love over and over again. I love this art form. I think that this art form is the most magnificent art form that ever existed. And I love that I get to do it every week. And we love that you get to do Now, man, let me tell you. also, man, 
Thank you for coming Always, on the show, man. man. Even though you threatened me to do it, even though... Man, it wasn't really a threat. Let me man. tell you what this nigga did. He took his phone out and go, what's time? Tell I'm me like, what wait this, a minute. Tell me what this brother did. <laughs> wait tell a what, minute. Tell me what this brother did. Tell me what this brother did. <laughs> <laughs> My man, D.L. Hughley. I love you, man. Always. Love you, King. All right. No more talk. For sure. Yeah.